I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my online hand tool workshop. This is a new venture for us. Now I'm far more accustomed to filming in a very formal setting when we do DVDs. This I want to be very informal. I want this to be just as if you were sitting here in the shop or standing around my bench and I was teaching you. So my son Jake is going to be behind the main camera. My son-in-law Frick is going to be on the mobile camera. I want to give you lots of good close-ups. I want to make sure that you're able to see the detail that you need to see. We're going to start off with making a candle box. Now what's going to be unique is we're going to be using only hand tools. There's no power tools involved. We'll start with rough lumber and we'll finish off a piece of furniture and hopefully we won't even use any sandpaper. We'll take it right from the plane. That's the way I like to do it. Now I'm not trying to be historically correct. I use hand tools only in this part of my business because I enjoy developing the skill exercising it and standing back and admiring it after the fact and I think there's quite a few of you that enjoy doing that as well I love that English craftsman's phrase uh, uh, workmanship of risk the entire out the outcome is entirely dependent upon your skill your ability to exercise or execute those various procedures and come out with a finished piece of furniture so this is uh, something that I've included in my hand tool workshops that I've taught over the past 10 years and uh, it was just a way of using up some of the wood that we were using, learning to dimension on and also cutting dovetails. It's nothing more than a simple box that is designed to hold candles. Well, there's your candles. These all have lids that simply fit on and come off. This one is uh, mahogany and, and uh, poplar. This one, these two are both cherry with uh, aspen on the sides. We're going to do this a little bit different. I want to have a sliding lid. It's going to complicate things a little bit. It's going to enable me to use my plane that cuts a, a nice little quarter inch bottom or quarter inch groove that typically is used to house the bottom. In this case, it'll also have the sliding lid. So, and pardon me, the other thing we're going to do too is we're going to use a half blind dovetail instead of a through dovetail. That makes it much easier when it comes to cutting the groove. I'm going to complicate it on the end, however, because the top has to uh, come all the way out to the end of the board. However, the half blind, you're not going to see the ends of these tails. So you'll see how we're, we've got a, a two different height, two different lengths here. It's going to make it a little more complicated, but it's also going to make it a little more fun, a little more challenging. So that was just a, one that I did just to kind of give you some idea of what this is going to look like when we're finished. We're going to use northern white pine. And a lot of people criticize or don't like pine, but I think it's a fantastic wood. The reason is it's very easy to cut. It's very easy to plane. It probably ages better than any other wood that I've ever worked including cherry because cherry will have a tendency to fade out with enough UV light whereas pine just keeps getting that deeper and deeper honey patina. Uh, I have a lot of children and um, it's inevitable that furniture I make is going to get dinged up. Pine, that actually enhances the look whereas in the hardwoods it looks terrible when they start to get beat up. The other nice thing about working with pine is you have to have extremely sharp tools and it teaches you an element or a finesse with your tools and by that I mean you can never pry when you're working around a dovetail in pine. If you do you're going to see it forever. Whereas a piece of maple you can be a little bit robust, uh, uh, a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't have to be quite so careful. In fact you don't have to be nearly as careful. Pine you have to be extremely careful to maintain those nice sharp corners and edges so you'll see that as we go through this. All right, I'm going to clear the bench off, we'll, uh, and we'll get started right away. I'm set these over here. I'll, I'll use, leave this one just to take some dimensions off of. We need some very simple notes. If this was any more complicated, I'd have plans. But for this one, it's just a matter of of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of wood. We just need to know the rough dimensions. We'll get a little bit closer as we get to the actual fitting and cutting the dovetail. So this is 12 inches long, so we, we're going to need two sides, two sides that are 12 inches, take that lid off for a minute, 12 inches by three and a half. Now, put my glasses on. These, I like to keep these sides nice and thin. I just think it, uh, it lightens the whole piece and makes it look a lot better, particularly in drawers. However, these are measuring just under three-eighths of an inch. And the problem is that we're going to cut a groove that that lid is going to slide in. So we're going to need a little more beef there. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to run these. I think we can get away, go full three-eighths. 
The ends are four and three eighths, so we're going to need two of those. Four and three eighths by, and I'm just going to go with the height that this is, even though it'll end up having less capacity in here when we have the lid on it, but I like the proportions. That's three and a half. Actually, I could have just figured that out from the side. Now the thickness. I want to do a half line. I just want to show you something. Most of you understand the difference between a half blind and a uh, through dovetail. When you do a half blind, this end lap, that has to be heavy enough that it won't uh, it it won't break off when you're actually executing the joint. It has to have appearance of being strong enough that it doesn't get too spindly. And if you tap your finger on there, sometimes if it's too thin, it rings hollow. There really isn't any glue surface between the end grain of the tail and that long grain of the uh, of, of the uh, end lap. So this is actually probably a little thinner than it should have been. So I've got to beef that up a little bit. And this piece is measuring just under 5 8 so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with those pieces of being a full 5 8 of an inch. Now the bottom, the bottom and top, I'm going to, I'm just going to rough dimension these. We'll, uh, we will get a little more specific as we get closer to doing it. So that bottom is probably going to be about 11 and a half inches long. And that'll work for the top as well. Actually, you know what, I'm going to amend that. I'm going to go 11 three quarter because the top is going to go all the way to the end, whereas the bottom is going to sit in a groove on all four sides. So it's going to be probably closer to about 11 and a quarter. But for ease of doing this, I'm going to keep those two pieces the same until the, right the very, just before they reassemble. So I'm going to change that to 11 and 3 quarter for length. The width, that's 4. I'm going to go 4 and an eighth just to be make sure I've got enough. And uh, probably going to go half inch on the thickness. The bottom I'll actually reduce because it's going to fit into a quarter inch groove. I want a little shoulder all the way around there, but we don't need to have a full half inch thickness. But like I said, we'll take that down when we get there. All right, so there's the six pieces. Now, I'm going to use, as I mentioned, pine, and I've got a piece standing behind me that I'm going to cut this out of. And I'm just going to go in, I'm going to lay that out now, and just kind of see where I can get the best looking wood out of this board. A few knots that I'm going to purposely avoid. I'm not trying to be particularly frugal. I'm, I'm uh, more interested in what the out final outcome is going to be, so. I want it to look as good as possible. Now, I got a bench brush here somewhere. Jake, do you see that bench brush hanging right up? Where is it? Ah. I had Mitch in here earlier cleaning up. I wonder if I can find anything. Mitch, if you haven't you haven't uh, met him from one of my videos, is five years old, and I'm sure he'll be in the business at some point. Now, this is rough sawn lumber. And what you have to realize with rough sawn lumber is at some point it has sat outside in the drying phase. That means it more than likely has picked up windblown dirt. And I don't want to find that with my plane. So I'll give that a good scrubbing. It also helps it easier to see the grain. Flip it over and do the other side as well. piece I'm going to use. Now I like the heartwood and sapwood. It just gives you a little bit of contrast. And I'm going to see if I can't use that. I'm going to, I'm going to come down into here somewhere. My square. Like I said, I'm not trying to be frugal with this. My main concern is what the outcome is going to be. So I'm going to take a section right out through here. So I'm actually I'm probably going to start back right out here. First thing I'm going to do is just get rid of that piece. I'll grab my crosscut saw. Support that as close to the end of my horse as I'm comfortable with. Keep my knee on here to support it. Use my thumb to get the saw started. Now I'm going to keep my line so I'm just on the outside of it. Let the saw do the work. 